All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Delivering Activities from Animal Anatomical Curriculum Online. It is 11.30 a.m., so we will get started. My name is Emily Klinsky. I'm on the marketing team here at RealityWorks. Presenting, we have Jamie McIntosh. He is our Real Career Product Manager. Um, Jamie has been with RealityWorks for nine years, and his topics cover student engagement, technology in the classroom, gaming, filling the skills gap, business education, and various agriculture and welding topics. So he is a great resource for today. With that being said, I'll pass things over to Jamie to get us rolling. All right, thank you very much, Emily, and um, welcome everyone. Uh, Want to get started today with um, our content. Really thank you for taking the time and uh, where we're at right now. Um, just a few things to uh, get us uh, started here for Zoom uh, meeting reminders. You will have the um, ability to ask questions. If you go to your chat uh, feature, there is a chat feature where you can press that button and then it will allow you to ask questions and we'll try to answer all those questions as we go through today. Um, if you have questions throughout, we'll uh, try to get those answered um, as we go along. Another thing here is this is being recorded. We do have a uh, email that we will send you with the um, uh, the activities that we're talking about, the work that we're going through, um, and so then you can use that uh, as you need because this is about you and how we can help you uh, in this world as well. So um, really to get you started here, want to talk through about how you can get our curriculum and the curriculum for your usage. So um, we'll talk about this at the end as well, but just want to kind of go through uh, uh, this um, uh, kind of overview here for you so you know where you can get this information. So first thing is if you go to our website, realityworks.com, uh, there is a uh, section, you scroll down a little bit, it says COVID-19 response, and it says learn more. All you need to do is click on that learn more, and what will come up is it will give you the resources that we have uh, for you right now in this time um, for you to be able to use. So um, things like our webinars are going to be listed there. Um, we have uh, this webinar today. We'll be doing more ag education webinars. We also have a welding webinar coming up on Wednesday or Thursday, if that's of interest to you as well. So different opportunities for uh, um, you know professional learning opportunities there. Uh, we have um, then resources here, including uh, things like guides and curriculums. And so that will be there for you to be able to use as well. Um, and then if you click on the, uh, again, if you click on that guides and curriculum, it then goes to um, the different uh, um, features here. And at the bottom here, you can see that website. It's www.realityworks.com backslash access dash your dash guides dash and dash curriculum. Um, that then gets you in and it gives you all of our curriculum um, in a PDF format. So it's our, uh, our worksheets, our teacher guides, our PowerPoint slides, all there for you to be able to see. So everything we talked about today, it's on the website there for you to grab and use as you need in this time. Um, so once you click on that, then it gives you everything from the, the guides itself to the curriculum where you can download that curriculum and be able to use that. So let's get started today because really this is about how we can help you and what you can do. So with that said, um, I'll just remind us, you know, social distancing in this time is very important. You are in a uh, position where as uh, we start up today, you know, it's one of those things where, um, <clears throat> hey, we're in a new world in, in this uh, remote learning. And um, so I hope that you are, you know, trying to keep a positive attitude, your humor about you, but we are here to try to help you in this. And so, you know, as we're working today, um, as you're working, it's a, it's a new norm. We have children um, who might be interrupting you. We have, um, you know, you're in a different mode of your day-to-day -day, uh, interaction with your students. Some days you're on, some days you're not. And so how do you interact with them? And so we want to walk all those things through with you um, today. So to start with, I really want to start with our remote learning teaching options. And so what we're going to do here is just give you a lot of options. Um, I'm like you right now, and I'm working from home. And so this is something that um, we are doing, and we're doing it in a, in a fashion, trying to say, okay, we understand where you're at and what you're doing. Some of you have a lot of tech savvy, some of you don't. How can we help? Some are using things like Zoom, 
Some of you are using um, Microsoft Teams or Skype or different uh, remote learning opportunities. Sometimes you have different types of uh, learning management systems from Blackboard or Canvas and um, 123 Learn, different opportunities there to use, Moodle, but some of you don't. And so want to give a, a lot of different options and try to make it as um, user friendly for you, the teacher, um, for your learners. So wanted to start with one. One of the things that we heard, and this was at an ag educated teacher at the uh, ACT webinar that was uh, presented last week, and I just really thought it really hit the, the point. And what that ag educator talked about was, um, and I, I kind of paraphrased what he said, but he said, we know the content as ag educators. What we're looking for is the best way or the perfect way for the approach. Because as ag educators, I know I, I've gotten to talk to a, a lot of you. It's one of those things where you are very good at your craft. You are always looking at the best way to um, help your students, interact with your students. So you know the content. What you may be um, kind of feeling a little bit around for and trying to figure out is how do you get that approach to, to work for you? So we want to start with that um, first here and work in, in that world here. So in this world of remote learning, I'm just going to give some examples here. Some may be right up your alley, some may not work out for what you're doing, but trying to give you some different variables here that can help you. So for example, scheduling your time. You know, one of the things that we're now in a different world is it's not a regular eight hour class period or a block period or um, how you do it in a normal world. So some of the things you may want to start looking at is this getting into a new rhythm and into a schedule with your students if you haven't done so already. Um, some examples here, and I just kind of uh, put some of this together for you to start thinking about, you know, how are you interacting with your students? And one of the things that can be overwhelming is this, you, I, and I talked to a lot of it, um, ag educators about how you have four preps, five preps, six preps, you know, how many different things you have to do. And so that might be overwhelming to you. How do we help and kind of bring it into more manageable chunks? So what I have here is just a schedule. You know, maybe it's a Monday meeting time where you're grouping your students and you actually get that face-to-face -face time. And it, through the day, it's more of that interaction, one-on-one, -on -one, groups of five, groups of 10, whole classes. How are you interacting with them? And maybe that's a meeting time. Tuesday, maybe that's your tutorials, where I'm going to get out some information for my students to understand and know. And that's where I'm going to do kind of the, the meat and potatoes, that learning opportunity. Maybe Wednesday is a time for weekly updates. Maybe that's a check-in time, and it's much more of that connection and that relationship with your students as it is just with that training of do you know more or do you understand the, the, um, the concepts at, at, at hand. One of the big pieces that we're hearing from a lot of teachers, ag, uh, especially ag education, is that, man, you are hands-on learning, not only with what you're teaching, but how you interact with your students. You have a relationship with those students. And now all of a sudden that's kind of been, well, it's been distanced. And so how do you still check in with your students? You might be the best thing that some of your students um, have right now. Um, and, and it might be a typical time and they may not know what to do or how to work through some of their own feelings or thoughts. So maybe a Wednesday weekly check-in is not about the education side, but it's about the relationship side you need to interact with them. Another example was Thursday then, Maybe it's time for you to switch, uh, switch gears here, and instead of you teach, maybe you have a teach the teacher. Have your students come back to you with tidbits or facts or information on a topic, on a broad subject, mm -hmm. on uh, a, a whole uh, animal um, uh, system, and, and have them teach you. See if they can teach you something um, and, and work that way. Work backwards or kind of flip the classroom in that sense. And then Friday, you know, what are the fun finds? It's been a long week and every week as we are home and, and um, you know, isolated, it can be, come longer and longer. So let's get into and finish out the week strong with some fun finds. So with that kind of a, a schedule idea, what we also have is some teaching options for you. And so we want, I want to talk through and kind of go through some of these teaching options that may be beneficial for you. All right. Now, after we get through the teaching options, then we're going to go into our curriculum and how it can help you in this um, in, uh, animal anatomy. But I want to talk through, and as we go through these teaching options, have you be thinking about then, okay, how is the best way for me to use this um, content to um, really approach how I'm helping my students? So some examples of some teaching options that we have is just what we're doing and starting with is a remote lecture. This is that opportunity for you to 
talk, maybe do a, um, a, a taped version that you can put out on YouTube, or maybe it's this where everyone comes together and it is a remote lecture. And it's you talking and it's your kid, the students giving um, feedback. Then maybe you add and you go from a lecture and you add presentation slides. Kind of what we're seeing here as well is I have my video where I'm actually talking to you, but I have presentation slides as well, giving them that audible, but also that visual, really connecting those two in that world. Then maybe it's adding the activity to it. So that lecture, PowerPoint, and activity. Okay, we've talked about this, but now let's get it down and let's bring it to your level in the sense of, okay, now there's an activity that we're gonna include with this. So then I can see, are you participating? I can see, are you understanding the, the, the uh, topic? Are you reflecting on what you're learning? Then we go into uh, another focus where, again, how can you create hands-on learning? And so lecture, PowerPoint, activity, hands-on learning. The great thing about what we do in ag education is getting students to understand by doing. And so how can we still do that? And there's still ways, because even here in our, in our classroom of our home, there are ways that we can give hands-on learning. And then finally, um, add a research or a project to that. What can your students be doing during the day um, that they can be doing on their own? Now, for them, it might be difficult to have to figure out, but there's a lot of creativity for them to, to gain in, in critical thinking. And as an other piece of that, your, your parents of your students might be very thankful that you're giving them projects so they are focused on something and not just watching TV or on screens or asking when is this always going to be over, uh, what is this going to be over with. So giving some of those project-based type ideas can be very helpful, not only for the students, but for your, your parents as well, who are also walking through this with you as well. So we're going to start with remote learning. Uh, excuse me, remote lecture. And I just want to walk through a few things here with that. And so I uh, myself have two locations here. I have my computer here, and then I have an extra um, uh, camera that I'm going to talk through. So I'm going to show you a few things in this world here with remote learning. Now, so some of the things with remote learning is, again, here's some great pieces for you, is to have a focus. One of the problems we can get is we can get too broad and we want to cover everything. Well, the best thing that you may want to do is really, instead of getting too much, really narrow it down and give them something to look at and something to focus on. And a lot of times a great piece would be that demonstration opportunity. So with that demonstration opportunity, I want to share a little bit of something that you can do. So in this case here, all right, we have um, the ability here to uh, um, go through different uh, um, uh, cur um, curriculum, but also be able to share with you um, and your students some demonstration focuses. Now, what I have here in front of me is our um, cow uterus here, all right? And so it's something where you might want to start with a remote lecture and actually do a demonstration talk to the students about the different parts, what's going on, um, what are the different features within this, and give your students kind of that, um, that knowledge base that you would in a classroom. Walk through kind of step by step, showing them different features and, and how it moves from the, um, the outside of the cow to the vulva, to the uh, vagina, and working all the way through down into uh, the oviducts and, and working through that whole process. So it might be something that you want to start with by really kind of showing a demonstration focus here. Now, in this case here, I have different models and some of you may have different models. Some of you may not. Sometimes with that, that lecture piece, it may not be as, as easy as, um, as, as showing, um, just in this case here, um, showing them the model itself, you might have to use things like pictures or uh, video that you have with that remote le learning. But again, this is also a place where allowing students to question and discuss what you're working on helps them to bring them kind of into this remote classroom. So by having them be able to talk to you and you show them and say, do you understand what I'm teaching you? Do you see this? That brings a different level of understanding and then communication with you and your students. Now, another option 
is the lecture and the presentation slide. And that's kind of what we're doing and what you see right now is the ability again is have a focus, okay? Sometimes to less is more on a presentation slide. And so if you're gonna be using presentation slides, don't have a whole bunch of different um, words and very small, make those words big. Make them be able to see them. Have many slides, multiple slides with larger words allows your students to be able to understand better and go over more, uh, more in depth. Now, options here. One is to do the demo first. Okay, so in this case, if I stop my slide here, maybe I'm going to talk about uh, artificial insemination. And so I'm going to use my example here of, yep, you need to actually go in with your um, pipette or your AI gun, go all the way up here, and this is the cervix right here. And so teach them, and with that cervix that you have here, um, it's something where you can then um, have to manipulate and get through and move through. Now at the same time, I can show you by putting this on top here, right? If I have to go into the cow, I'm actually gonna go in, I'm up almost to my elbow here where then I'm able to then grab onto that cervix. And so understanding those placements and those pieces can be very important here. So again, doing a demonstration, and then once that demonstration is done, being able to um, go into and, 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 and um, talk about, now let me present what this looks like in this world. Now the other side is to do the presentation first. So in this case, walk through a presentation. As you can see on my screen here, here is what the female reproductive uh, parts look like for the cow, uh, our cow model, all right? And it includes the vulva, includes the vagina, all right? and the different organs and what's going on and giving students some interaction in that, that world. Then the cervix, and that's what we were just talking about. All right, and so working here and talking through those pieces before you go on um, and then say, now that you understand this, you have a visual, now let's talk about it and go through the demonstration at that point. All right, another option here is adding to this whole uh, training piece is the activity part. So in this case, again, it's very important to have a focus, but also to explain, we're doing the lecture, we're doing the PowerPoint, because what we're gonna to try to accomplish at the end is this activity, to see if you've gained a knowledge, gained an understanding, and a purpose. What's the purpose of this? And so sometimes that might include a reflection piece or, or, or something to assess as well. Now, for your usage here, we have a lot of activities, journaling, um, reflection pieces. Now, some of those might be very simple in the sense of, okay, we had a presentation today. I want you to journal about what you heard, what you thought, what you found interesting, or I want you to reflect and bring me tomorrow two new questions that you had from our presentation today. Because part of this is not only, hey, am I creating a great, uh, wonderful presentation or, uh, or lecture or opportunity for learning, but it's asking questions, what are the things that you're learning or that I'm missing that we can still learn together? Because when you, instead of talking to your students, but bring them alongside of you, then all of a sudden greater learning comes, comes from that. So with that being said here, the next thing is then adding that hands-on activity. And so I wanna talk through a little bit about how you can actually do this. Because again, when you add activity, when you add that hands-on learning, now all of a sudden you have students actually working and engaging in that sense. So students work uh, with what they have. Okay, let's be creative. So let me give an example here um, for some hands-on learning, okay? And so in this case here, I have just a few examples where one is um, have students create their own reproductive system, all right? And so this is one that um, someone used different types of materials that they had around the house trying to show what the reproductive system was. Now I use this other one because, hey, this is a great opportunity to tie in, hey, we're talking about agriculture, we're talking about some sort of, of our focus here now, can you bake? Can you do something else in your home that you're gonna be doing anyway and bring it back? Adding creativity into that world. So in this case here, uh, for myself, I went and I walked around my own home with my kids and I'm thinking about this in the sense of, I, I got some um, uh, Hot Wheels tracks here. And so, you know, I can take this and I can bring it together and I can say, and I'm taking my, 
my little guy here, and he's going to do a presentation for you. If I'm a student, maybe it's one of those things where it's a presentation um, where I'm going to ask, and I'm going to have this um, guy walk through and do a, a lecture on all the different parts of the reproductive system. So they have to go through the reproductive tract, and they get to the cervix here, and it splits off. I have a, a place where all of a sudden it splits off here. Well, now I have the two uterine horns. And so walk through and have your students try to do an interaction and, and work into that one. All right. So that is, those are the kinds of things where just by, you know, a, a quick walk around my own home, I was able to find different pieces that creatively I can create this idea of um, a, uh, a hands-on learning, um, a, a bringing in that hands-on, making them create something. Now, by doing that, you're going to find some pretty amazing, far out there ideas that some of your students have. Now, at the same time, all right, it's going to be something where with those hands-on learning activities, they're going to get deeper. They're going to have a better understanding because of, oh yeah, I used a reproductive track as, um, or reproductive as actual racing tracks. And so that's going to be something that brings them a lot more knowledge and thought process into what they're actually doing. So with that said here, the last one then I want to talk about is this idea of lecture and PowerPoint, but um, hands on learning um, research is adding a research element to it. And so one of the things that you can do is again, keep the focus in your lectures and your interaction action with your students, but now let them branch off. Let them go into their interests. Give them that deep dive into to deeper things. Create an overarching project that can help them, that they can work on with you or without you, and then monitor it as you go. So some examples that I just was, was thrown up here is maybe it's a feed schedule. Maybe your, your uh, students have cats or dogs at home. What is the best feeding schedule? How much food are they eating? Working on that with your animals if that science is something they want to do. You know, um, right now we're seeing around the country where people are making masks. People are making masks for our, um, our uh, um, healthcare workers and our populations that need them, right? Maybe it's something where they should start making different animal toys, things for those animals that, okay, I can use that. And why is an animal toy good? Maybe they need to research down into what does it do for that animal? What are the, the helpful uh, things for those house pets that could be helpful? And, and they need to do some more research to understand that. Maybe it's that um, understanding the cycles. We're talking about um, the, the reproductive track here. Maybe there's some cycles you can talk through and work through with your, your uh, students. Then maybe there's some show projects that your students need to work on. Maybe it's braiding hair or learning how to um, uh, um, you know, uh, um, brush out tails or things of that nature. Have them be working on projects that maybe aren't going to be until the end of the summer, but they can start working and get a head start now. And then maybe there's some of those building or design projects that they can work on as well. That might be something that is interesting and, and helpful for them um, as, as they go along and say, hey, let's, let's do it virtually or, or here where we're talking through what are the best ways and then walk through that whole process. So then when we get the chance or maybe they have the wood or the, the, um, the materials at home, then they can do that at home and create something to then show off next year or later this year when you get back. So those are some different options there that we're really kind of focusing and want you to start thinking about. How best can you use this time and use these different um, opportunities here based on different ways to do uh, remote learning? So with that being said, I want to dive in and work on and focus on um, some different anatomical curriculum that we have um, for you today. So with that, here are some of the anatomical curriculum that is, going to be, that is available for you that you can use and interact with. Um, and want to let you know it is all available for your usage here um, through RealityWorks, but we're going to just hit some of the highlights. We're going to talk about digestive systems and reproductive systems from our animals here. So all of our sections here, all of our, our lessons that we have really focus on um, really three things. They all kind of follow this, this, uh, this, this line here. You have a focus section, really capturing students' attention, understanding what's going on, what the topic is. Then we go into a learn, um, either some sort of presentation mode, either uh, interaction, um, PowerPoint slides, uh, kind of um, some sort of engaging topic that you're actually working through. 
And then there are re, uh, um, always going to be a review as well. All right. So we are going to then dive into some of these. Now, if you were here last time with our last webinar, um, we talked a little bit about the um, cow model. We're going to focus just on one of the two. Now, we have digestion and reproductive systems in here. What we're going to talk about is um, just about our uh, um, digestion model here. But one of the things, if you have our product, that is great. This will help you to be able to show and demo. If you don't, that is okay because these models, you can still use um, the curriculum by going to our website and being able to use that curriculum even if you don't have our models. But um, with that, I want to talk through, okay? So one of the things here is starting with that focus, going into learn and then review. So focusing on a, a ruminant system, and I have our um, cow model here, our uh, cow ruminant system model here. And so you might want to start with the question, what are the four sections of the ruminant? So in this case, I can then take it apart and we can talk through what are the four sections? Where are they located? What is involved with each section? And so that's a question just to get them started. Um, after you get that focus then, start going into our curriculum. And one of the things is we have PowerPoint slides. So you can work with um, our PowerPoint slides talking about the different parts and what each one does. At the same time, if you have our, uh, our uh, models here, you can actually start showing, and if it's the cow model or if it's the ruminant model, whatever one you have, you can start talking about, okay, the ruminant, what's that like? Oh, the honeycomb section of the reticulum, okay? And you can actually see that honeycomb. You can actually show them what that looks like, um, both uh, with our PowerPoint slides, but also by using the model itself. All right. Then talking about the uh, omasum and the abomasum and how they all work together and how large the different areas are compared to one another and how it works together and works through the system and then it moves around and then leaves that system as it goes into um, the small intestine. And so where does that location actually come to and what is in, involved there? So we have these slides here so you can work through and talk through and hand these off to your students and use them. We also then have um, uh, different review options here. Now in this case here, we're talking about the uh, ruminant track and there's actually um, a worksheet for this that goes along so students can work through not only the slides but also um, um, going through and, and learning that themselves. All right, gonna focus on the horse model as well. <clears throat> And talk about their stomach. All right. Now, one of the reasons why I did it this way is we also have the reproductive systems as well. But one of the interesting things here is we have the different stomachs. Okay. And so you can use, and one of the big things with what we do is really ask the question of compare and contrast. How is one different than the other? What does one look like? What what is um, it in how does one um, different? How are they the same? and kind of going through. And so you can go through the different models here and start talking about, okay, what is the four chamber um, uh, um, ruminant system and how is that different than the horse? What is actually there and, and how does that, um, that differ? Okay, now again, our curriculum, we have digestive system and reproductive system. What I'm gonna show you right now is our reproductive system. Again, if you have the models, either the horse model, the reproductive track or the digestive track, these are great tools for you to be able to show, walk through, do videos with your students. But at the same time, if you don't have one, you can still use our curriculum because it has great PowerPoint slides uh, ability for you to use it as well. So in this case, we're gonna talk through the parts of the digestive track. What does each part of the stomach do? And then um, have a little quiz. And so in this, one of the things you may actually talk about is what are those um, interests that you have and then go into Again, um, the slide presentation here of talking through and being able to open this up and show the different pieces of the inside here, okay? And so it comes from the esophagus and where does it go from there? And after it goes down in the esophagus and, and works itself through, where does it go after that? And then the different regions that it actually goes through and why these regions are important for, for the animal. And what happens in these regions if something goes wrong, all right? Colic is a big issue with, with horses. So students understand how the stomach works is very important. 
and, and why and how easy it is for a horse to get that is very important. All right. And then how does it work and move itself out? Now, if you have the, um, the horse model here, you then have the ability to show the different regions where the stomach is in location um, here, the stomach where it is in location to the small intestine, to the, the rectum and, and how it all works through. So again, going from an overarching view of the whole animal system, the digestive system, and then bringing it into the reproductive system um, on, a, on a much more focused level, just talking about the stomach in this sense. All right. And again, we have a uh, test here, a systems test, where you can actually go through and have the students take it and say, how does it start in um, coming in, food coming in the mouth, and how does it leave the body? What can you do and how do you, you use that? Now, Switching gears a little bit here, so those are the reproductive, um, or I'm sorry, the digestive sides. Looking at the reproductive um, side, we have the ability for you to then um, work with the reproductive models as well. So in pig, I'm not going to talk about the digestive tract for the pig. I'm going to focus more on the reproductive tract today. So in this case, again, we have our models um, and you can use these. We have videos on our website that you can um, get students to be able to see some of these different parts um, as well. And so focus is here. Again, what do the parts do and why is, why is it important? So you may want to ask them, okay, students, what do you think that the two most important anatomical reproductive system parts are? Maybe you start with that and get feedback from them. What does one student say over the other? Now, is there one over the other? That's, that's up for debate and how you talk with issues, but it gets them thinking, gets them talking about, okay, different ideas of, well, I think it's for this. Some students may say, well, you know, the vulva is the most important because if you can't even enter the, um, the animal, then you're never gonna be able to uh, reproduce. But at the same time, if that animal um, is not ready to be, uh, the, the eggs are not ready, then we have a problem there too. It gets students talking, gets them interacting with one another, gets them to start thinking differently and, and asking questions to one another, which then brings engagement here. So female reproduction, again, slides for you, different worksheets for you to be able to walk through what the different parts are, are of the reproductive system. All right, um, and then why the each are important. And then we also have a uh, opportunity for you for worksheets here. So this is something where then you can um, use and get to your students and be able to work with them and see, okay, did they take in what we're teaching them? In remote learning, are they understanding? Now for some, again, I wanna take a moment here because this might be stuff that you've already taught this year. There's never a bad time to always go back and talk to your students and say, I know we did this. I know we've talked about this. I wanna see what you remember. I wanna see what you um, can hold on to and, and um, uh, remember from from this world. So those are different pieces there um, that uh, you can talk with your your uh, your um, uh, students with as well. Now, I lumped goat and sheep together. I put them together for the sole reason of wanting to be able to use them as an example from that compare and contrast. Okay. Now, again. In this world, uh, or in our curriculum, we have both digestive and reproductive systems, but I wanted to bring and just talk about um, the digestive system because, again, this is one of those things where maybe it's time for you to really kind of open up that discussion of differences um, between uh, different uh, digestive systems, okay? The pig digestive system, a lot like the human digestive system, or stomach, I should say, and, and talking to them, okay, what is the similarities and get some of that uh, biology going of what are the similarities that we have for the pig um, digestive system and um, the human digestive system and walk through that. Now, what is vastly different from there and what the goat and the sheep have and the, and the cow for that, that, uh, that as well. So walking through and using some of those different discussion points, um, but again, using the models, using our goat sheep models will help you to be able to give understanding of where the location is, all right? What the different parts are, all right? And helping your students in that way. Another option that you can even do is, you know, labeling them. As you are doing your presentation, maybe you got sticky notes and you're putting sticky notes on it and then taking pictures and sending those pictures to the students and saying, you know, what is this um, anatomical feature? What is this anatomical feature? What's the difference between the two? 
Why does one have one, one doesn't? You can go a lot of different ways again in this world. So in this case here, it kind of gets into that uh, mono and polygastic um, view. What are the different um, type of stomachs, quote unquote stomachs or ruminant systems that you have and how are they different from each other? Using the compare and contrast can really help your students start to really think through, okay, what do I know? What do I not know? How are they similar? How are they different? Really helping your students as, as you go along there. All right. Then um, again, there's a lot of slides, both for the, uh, the goat and the sheep on the digestive tract. All right. So using the goat examples here, it walks you through every different part of the, the uh, goat. And then also for the um, uh, sheep, it also has those same features showing the different uh, parts of both a goat and a sheep. All right. Then at the end, one of the great things about this is this is kind of a fun matching game, allowing you to then give your students an opportunity to say, hey, let's, let's be competitive. Let's play a game here. And there's actually matching games. Do they understand the systems that are, are involved there? And we have that in the digestive track here where you can, um, again, email this out, send this out, put it out on, on your learning management systems for students to be able to take these um, uh, uh, activities and, and try to dig in deeper and learn and understand more. So now I want to jump into um, two other animals. So we kind of did a lot of the, uh, the farm animals and, and some of those large animals, but a lot of students also are interested into that and interested in that um, uh, vet tech side. Or you know what? We have a lot of students who are now, because they are home, they're spending a lot more time with their dogs and their cats, um, a lot more time. And, and because of their interest in um, these, this world, they may be, have more of an opportunity to get to know and to understand their animal as well as animals in general because of where they're at. So talking about reproductive um, systems with the dog. So again, we have digestion and uh, reproduction. So all of those, but you can use our dog models for this. We have our large dog and our small dog, and it um, includes a curriculum for each of those animals. So in this case, again, walking through the um, female reproductive system, okay? Now, again, compare and contrast. What is different? What's the same with um, different animals? Then you can go into different things like artificial insemination, all right? Uh, uh, the, the gestation periods. Um, you can go into different types of, of understanding of, of where um, and what does this do, all right? There's a lot of push right now, which you can use the days to day, our current events of, a lot more people are staying home, all right? There's an interest in more uh, people um, getting rescue animals right now, all right? Humane Society is, is saying that they are um, having more interest now because people are home and they have time for animals. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? There's different reflections that you can, and uh, journaling opportunities you can have for your students there. So, you know, my question here for the students, you know, uh, you know as simple as, what do you do with a female dog? Is it spay or neuter? What do you do? All right, walking them into that, asking, okay, how many of your animals are spayed or neutered? Um, what type of animal? Do a, uh, a, a poll with your students. How many of you, what kind of dogs do you have? What kind of cats do you have? Um, what, uh, are they spayed or neuter, neutered? Um, have any of them um, have been bred before? Look at those types of things, create charts, create reports where you can start working through this and, and start looking at, okay, well, what does this mean? Are they smaller, more, more likely, uh, are there more uh, of your students who have small animals or larger dogs than small dogs? You know, looking at those things and then what does that mean? What does that mean in the sense of if I wanna be a vet tech or things, different areas that maybe I should focus on? Different opportunities there for you. Again, we have reproductive uh, um, presentation slides that you can give to your students and, and have there. And then there's a review here allowing your students to then go through and under, know if they understand what all the reproductive systems are. Now, what I'm showing is the female reproductive system. We also have the male as well. So you can then walk through and, and go through all the reproductive of both male and female um, as well within this. Now, last one here with our time left is the cat model. And I want to talk about the digestive system. Again, we have both um, digestion, urinary, and, and then reproductive here. But our cat model is, include, is something that you can use um, with this. And this whole piece here with the digestion then, okay, is what are some of the things that you have 
and the, the importance here um, of the overall animal. All right, now you can go in deeper with, with the cats. Again, you can go into um, things like uh, um, their teeth. Um, you can go into um, how they eat, what they're eating. Uh, you can go into nutrition. You can go into uh, different focuses as well. Um, and kind of what we talked about before is maybe it's, it's looking at and, and questioning, okay, um, how much is your cat eating? Uh, is there a difference between animal cats that are, um, you know, able to get outdoors, maybe a, a, a rural area and you can let your animals out or they're not house pets versus house pets. Does weight or um, things of that nature uh, cause them for to be, um, you know, uh, a longer lifespan, shorter lifespan? Those are the different kinds of questions that you can kind of come in here and ask. And so in this case here, you can walk through what are the important parts of the animal. And then here's another one where we have a matching game uh, for you to use um, in the digestive uh, track here. So these are all kind of um, those uh, different features here um, that we want you to be able to use, all right? And so I want to um, kind of walk through uh, with the time we have left here, some of the important features that we just talked about here is um, another uh, thing, some reminders for you, okay? And so with this, want to just um, uh, share with you a few more things here. And, and some of those are, are just this, all right? We have a whole whole slew, a whole bunch of different um, classroom resources for you. Our interest here is how can we help you in this time? And so you can go to our website, realworks.com. You can go to um, and, and get our edu or, uh, agriculture link here and go to all of our curriculum that are, again, in PDF format that you can then use and hand out to your students. Um, so there is free curriculum for you and your students to be able to, um, to get there. All right, so just to walk through that again, all right, is we have, again, go to our website. Um, we have this COVID-19 response. All right, learn more. You click on that. That then will bring you into uh, this area where you can then answer this um, and, and uh, look at these, these questions, or, sorry, look at these um, resources here and what you need. All right. So in this case, then, you click on what you're interested in, animal models. And then, as you can see, we have a ton of different models that are available for you. Not just, not just what I showed you there, but we have um, individual models. We have the whole animal model itself, okay? Now, I'm gonna jump out here. I'm gonna uh, share with you um, my uh, website here because one of the things you can do yourself is if you go into our product area here, you can then go um, to our egg, uh, animal and veterinary science area, and that will show you all of our different products that we have, okay? And so if I go show all here, it will then show up with everything that we have, and then you can click on each individual ones that you, you are interested in, all right? It gives you pictures of the overall uh, animal, all right? Showing you um, what is uh, um, the size of it, how large it is, what's all available here. And then there's videos as well for some of our products here that you can see how they work together um, and then uh, be able to see the different content that you have there, all right? And again, like I was uh, saying here, you go in onto our website and then I'm just gonna go into our animal models just to show you how many different animal models we actually have available um, with curriculum. All right, so some of them are, are, um, uh, are very focused in the sense of we have skeletal models um, and on different animals, and then we have very broad focuses with all uh, um, sorts of different systems there. So that is by going here to our website, gives you these different um, helpers while you are looking to really get an understanding in um, what you need. So. With that being said, I also want to talk to you and just remind everyone that right now, in this time, we have a 10% off for all of our agriculture products, our whole catalog of products here. Um, and so you can go to our website. And again, um, that is our RealityWorks website. 
And this is something that we will also send you tomorrow. So this will be something that we'll be emailing you afterwards. So you can have this and, and get to that 10% off. So if you're interested in any of our products, you can get that 10% off um, right away and um, have a quote for you. So maybe you can purchase right now, maybe you can't, but you want it for next uh, fall, you want it still, now's the time to get it for um, that little uh, incentive of 10% off um, during this time, preparing yourself for, for the future. Um, and then another thing to remind is we have an upcoming webinar on welding, and that will be on uh, Thursday, April 16th for you at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're interested, if you are in the egg mechanics, you're in that welding world, now is the time to be able to um, get more knowledge and understanding and get some help in that world. We'll be also be doing a welding webinar on that. So with that said, um, we're right at our time. And so if there's any questions, um, want to uh, um, see if there's any questions that you have. I know one thing that has been asked is again, I just walked through it, but we will be sending an email with all these resources and you can go to our website and get all these resources. They're there for you. Um, so we're gonna try to get that out to you. So um, if you, you know, missed it today, we will get that to you because we, um, uh, so you have those resources to be able to use. Um, and, and lastly, we are trying to be here with you um, as much as we can in this time because it is a tough time, but you are doing great things. I've been able to talk to a lot of educators in agriculture and you are doing great things for your students. Um, and so I would just, again, if there are things that I can help, we can help you with in getting that remote learning. What does that look like? Again, gave some examples today, but again, the approach is, there's a lot of different approaches, really looking at what works best for you. Keeping a focus, finding a way, if it's remote lecture, if it is presentation format, if it is uh, work in um, uh, uh, that um, activities or those home projects, whatever it is that best works for you, um, really looking to say, what is it that can, can help you um, to be able to uh, uh, do the best for your classes right now? So we thank you for your time. And if you do have more questions, feel free to reach out to us um, as well. All right, I, I hear that there's a question, but it was a little hard to hear. Can you repeat that? Uh, maybe a little louder, check your, oh. there we go. Sorry about that. Um, just regarding, can you show the full horse model again, um, just yeah. so they can get a sense of the size? Sure thing, yep. Yeah. So um, again, all of our products are um, available for you at realityworks.com. You just have to go to products and then go to agriculture, or you can even dive down into animal and veterinary science. But um, here's an example of, the horse model, again, it's a desktop model, um, uh, students standing next to it, so um, it fits on the desk. Um, it's about, you know, um, the size of, if, you know, from your, your stomach to, to your head, um, that's about the size of it. Um, and then all the pieces are proportionate, uh, all the anatomical uh, models and organs are proportionate to that, that model. It pulls apart, um, it has magnets on it, so you can um, uh, um, touch and feel, um, and, and see where those uh, individual pieces are. Yeah, good question. Awesome, and then it doesn't look like there's any other questions, um, just that the, we'll be getting a copy of the webinar and handouts as well. Awesome, and thank you for the time that you've had, um, and we will continue to work on these and, and do these webinars. One other thing is that we will be sending out a survey um, and looking to see what are other things we can help you with. We want to be there as a partner for you. What are some different uh, webinars that we could get for you to try to help you in that world? So um, we want to be able to, to help you if we can. Um, oh, so, Jamie, yeah. one last question that just popped up is about, do we have any large package discounts? Yeah, so one of the cool things is that we do package our different products together. So depending on what you're looking at, you, we do have different pathway packages for agriculture that um, package different things uh, together. So you can actually um, uh, go to our website, you can talk to our salespeople, and we do have packages that then help with discounting and help with some of that because it's a larger package. By getting those bundles, um, we do then have some discounts in, in, in that world. So yes, if you're looking for you know all-encompassing or <coughs> excuse me, multiple different types of um, 
types of, uh, of ammo models, yes, we have different options there for you. And it looks like that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the time that we had uh, with you today. Um, and keep on keeping on. You're doing great things, and we thank you for all the hard work that you do. Thank you.